good afternoon everyone my name is aditya uh, today i'm going to talk about throttling apis before it reaches your application uh, a little bit about me i am a been a system engineer and a devops engineer since quite some years now uh, i consult at devops nexus and i have contributed to some open source projects like kubernetes and fedora project i have authored a couple of tech books and i am a regular speaker at various conferences uh so what are we doing today today we are going to try to save the world from us now this is obviously an exaggeration uh because nothing can save the world from us but uh so let's talk about apis uh what is an api um any ideas about what's an api and i am not talking about the standard definition that we learned in our uh graduation days i am more interested in very simplistic very narrow down version of the of what is an api um since i don't see any hands raised i'm just going to say that an api is is something where we send a valid request and we receive a valid response uh, so today we are just going to focus on those two things that we will send a valid request to receive a valid response that's all we are going to do <laughs> and wherever there are whenever there are apis in whatever companies whatever organization small or big uh, there is a problem of api abuse now what does that mean um, and and not all api abuses are malicious in intent sometimes uh, some enthusiastic developer just writes an infinite loop just to check the status of the api that hey, is my job submitted is my job executed so on uh, there are times when uh, when some people are not happy with your api so they might intentionally abuse it uh, there are times when when your api is too open in nature so there are bots that might abuse it abuse it so uh, so i mean the abuse list goes on and it's a very very standard problem that a lot of orgs face uh, about how to mitigate or how to work with api abuses now there are some conventional popular methods which are uh, which are almost always used by a lot of a uh, lot of companies to handle this issue uh, a very standard way is to use middlewares like let's say rack attack or rate limit rack attack is a ruby library rate limit is a python library uh, and there are bunch of libraries present in almost all the programming languages out there uh, my my personal problem with these sorts of libraries is that is that the bad request still hits the application right it's the application that decides that you know i'm not going to serve this but it still hits the application and because it still hits the application it ends up eating up a lot of resources i mean if you are getting bombarded with with a lot of data a lot of request even if you are denying the request you st you still have to serve it in a in some way and that's not always a good thing to do um and now to mitigate the standard problem with this standard solution is to use of the shelf wafs wafs or web application firewalls right uh, my uh, another my second problem with web application firewalls is that sometimes they are expensive I mean, if you are going for a proprietary solutions almost always they'll cost you thousands of dollars um and sometimes they are less flexible and i'm going to come to that example of less flexibility in one of the most popular uh, off the shelf wafs uh, and when we talk about infrastructure when we talk about uh, wafs one one most common waf that comes in my mind is aws waf aws has a web application firewall which you can put in front of uh, application load balancer uh, so good news is that you can really rate limit using that so that is something that is available to you out of the box which is awesome right uh, my problem with it is that they have they have like a hard coded window that you can only rate limit in intervals of 5 minutes which is which is slightly weird for me because usually people when when people sell apis they do per minute rate limiting or per hour rate limiting but somehow aws found it a good idea to do per 5 minute rate limiting so you know a, a standard number of requests will go um and when aws sees that that it has exceeded the threshold it will stop them for 5 minutes and 5 minutes is i think a slightly longer uh, time interval in certain cases um and i mean i can still live with 5 minutes maybe if i'm like 
uh, a very small company i don't have time to in time or money to invest into something better um, but the worst news is that they can only rate it on the basis of ip addresses now if you are let's say a large organization um, where you have multiple teams if one team actually ended up abusing the api of somebody and you were using this waf solution uh, basically all other teams are now locked out and and again like imagine a worse scenario like within the same company you can actually go to the team and say hey stop abusing the api because we are also using it let's say if you are in a, a sort of co-working space where another company abused it then you have pretty much no say that company can <laughs> effectively block you out of using somebody else's api which they won't even own so so that's too weird for me um but yeah uh now one solution that i figured out to mitigate this particular issue is to use standard engineering now this is something which i have not seen a lot of people using it and i don't know why maybe this is not very well documented very maybe not very popular but but you can actually use nginx to rate limit and that is awesome because not only based on ip addresses nginx can actually rate limit on on a, on the basis of a variety of parameters like uh, basic auth usernames uh, http agent uh, http version ip address of course is one of them i mean so on and so forth you can you can block it on on a variety of parameters now my problem with them is that it doesn't handle customer tiers so when we build apis when we are in the business of selling apis we basically uh, what we want is to sell various plans maybe maybe there's a personal plan there's a business plan there's an enterprise plan and all those plans have different allowances somebody might be paying you 20 dollars uh, for a personal plan and you might allow them to use it, let's say 100 times but there are companies who will paying you tens of thousands of dollars and you want them to use your apis a lot more um and if you are using standard nginx method that standard nginx won't be able to differentiate um so what the solution you can still use for is to weed out like huge spikes so that you can uh, maybe you can get rid of some sort of small ddoses uh, wherein you can say that you know um my my biggest enterprise customer uses 10000 uh, per minute if i see a request from a single ip address uh, in the sense of 20000 per minute then i should drop it so something like that you can weed out like huge spikes but still might not uh, be what we want it to be so my solution to this entire mess is to use nginx plus lua plus cds now nginx has a lua plugin which is very awesome um, basically you you have to create a pipeline where nginx will receive and respond to the requests and the lua will maintain basically the logic of rate limiting where you can say that you know based on this key do something based on that key do something um, and redis will keep a track of the current state like how many requests have been processed for this particular client and how many are left and so on the big plan is that in the beginning we assign a fixed number of tokens to each user and store it in the redis bank i'm choosing to call it bank you can call it anything and the and each request will cost a, a certain amount of tokens for simplicity we can say that each request cost one token and as as people keep on bombarding me with requests i keep on deducting their token balance and when the balance hits zero i will not give them response to their apis unless the token balance is reset or restored after a minute or whatever windows you choose it to be um so i prepared a quick demo for the same okay um so i have i have a setup wherein i have an nginx yeah so i have basically two nginx is running first if you see the the first nginx in the top that has the lua code second nginx is just serving a static page that's basically where i am proxy passing so your application that is supposed to serve the apis that will be the second nginx sort of uh so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to use apache benchmark um, and and bombard it with with around 10000 requests all right uh, nginx.lua is basically my own local host i've just created a name in uh,
right so yeah so this just made uh 10000 requests and if you see non 2xx responses yeah non 2xx responses so basically these many requests were denied and i did 10000 requests now let me try to do the requests again quickly so since i did the request within a minute all the 10000 requests got denied okay and best part is that it didn't actually reach my application at all so my application resources were not wasted uh so i'm just going to talk gibberish for like 30 more seconds primarily because i want to show you that it gets reset every minute and and we can do it again um so how many of you had tea this morning no i think 30 seconds are done okay so if i do it again i think it should serve all the 10000 requests i mean 7000 sorry yeah so it denied approximately 3000 requests and served this 7000 uh so basically this is the standard uh, nginx plus lua wherein i'm just checking redis bank again and again and figuring out that if i should serve the request or not uh so i have some benchmarks to talk about what really happened here i'm sending 10000 requests with a concurrency of 50 requests together uh this is this is just i have created 5000 users uh, and random number of token the test user that i'm using has 7000 tokens so whatever number of requests i sent only approximately now this is not very accurate by the way if i'm saying 7000 because of the concurrency level not all of the requests uh, will go through so when it is 7000 approximately like half percent or something like that extra will go through um so this is this is what we figured out when we benchmarked it that it does add a bit of latency to your overall response time uh, for example if i was not using this nginx at all uh, it was 3 milliseconds but with lua and redis 2 milliseconds uh, were added to 50% of the requests and again if i talk about 99% of the requests then around 6 milliseconds were added uh, added to most of the requests but i think it's not too bad because if i look at the mean time only about 2 milliseconds has increased now that is something that i think we can live with it's not too much but it again if you are doing video streaming that this might cause you a problem but for standard http requests that's not a big deal uh it it has fairly decent accuracy so this is basically an average of about 15 to 20 tries uh the accuracy is fairly good it's but it's not like 100% accurate uh again but i i think the cost that it presents and the savings that it can do in terms of infrastructure uh this inaccuracy should be acceptable the longest request that we had a uh, problem with was also added just a latency of 6 milliseconds so uh, so that was all uh there are some corner cases that i might want to talk about so i'm using redis you might you can plug in any backend you want memcache mysql postgres sqlite Maybe not SQL, but whatever. Uh, if there is too much data in Redis, I've seen that latency increases a little bit. Like if you insert a million users or something like that. Uh, and there are a couple of cases that you might need to consider while implementing this. The first one is that whatever request comes without a throttling parameter. So right now we use username as the throttling parameter. Uh, that's why I passed uh, while running Apache Benchmark. I passed uh, pass the flag minus u1. Uh, but what if it comes without throttling parameters now that is something that is less of a technical question more of a business uh, question that does your business actually wants to you know handle things uh, how do you, how does your business want to handle things when when there is no throttling parameters we implemented this for uh, for browser stack were awesome by the way and allowed us to use it uh, and according to their business plan they say that if there is no throttling parameter you just allow it through because then application will take care of accepting or rejecting it based on the based on what kind of api request it is and similarly there is one there was one use case which we were worried about that what if redis crashes 
so you can actually write uh, error handling in lua which will allow you to bypass the entire redis workflow in case there is no redis available so your customers will not see impact at all and that will give your ops time to figure out the root cause and fix the problem so that's all i have questions So um, you have built a very good uh, system over there. Uh, congrats on that. So uh, my question is, have you considered any other open source platforms while you were building this or AWS's own API gateway? Uh, what open source? I mean, we tried out a bunch of... Uh, bunch of yeah, yes. I just want to know what were your experience with this and why didn't you build your own? My experience was pretty much summed up in, in a slide where I said either they were too complicated and inflexible or they costed us a lot of money. This was actually a reasonably good mix of not costing us much and it was quite straightforward to implement. I mean, it didn't take a lot of time to implement it and it was, since it was fully programmable and very easy to program, we could embed as many business cases as we want to versus any off-the-shelf solution. Hey, um, where's the code? Out here. Straight ahead. Where's the code? Uh, I want to see how it works. Uh, where is the code? Code is unfortunately not that open source, but it's a standard library. Uh, if you go to um, go to Cloudflare, folks, OpenResty is the name of the plugin which embeds Lua, and then it's a standard if else and a Redis plugin. I mean, there is nothing. Uh, it's just like probably twenty lines. There's nothing much to it. Uh, hi, my question is that uh, how does the reset work? Like, who does the reset here? Yeah, that's actually a good question. I was hoping somebody would ask that. Uh, reset can be taken care of by multiple ways. Uh, if you are, let's say, for example, on Rails, uh, you can do a rake task. Uh, that's one way. Another way is that, and what what we ended up doing was uh, that we set each parameter with a TTL, and when TTL expires, uh, the first request that's gonna hit is going to renew. The, the token bank. Uh, but there are a variety of ways to do it. Like I said, the, the main thing that you need to know from this talk is that Nginx and Lua can be embedded very easily using Cloudflare, Cloudflare OpenResty plugin. The rest is just simple if else and you know, error handling and bunch of those. Hi. Um, so uh, you talked about uh, uh, sniffing header. Uh, some some attributes in the headers and everything, right? So does it have the capability to do, I mean, to sniff out certain attributes in the post or request body? I mean, generally the client details are available, like the plans that you were talking about, right? So those are all available as part of the body uh, in the request. Right? That so part you need to take care of when you build the token bank. Let's say here, most likely your users will come with an API token or something like that. And that API token, API token can be a token bank identifier. Now, depending upon their plan, to basically update your uh, Redis bank, and it is taken care of like that. In 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 for browser stack, we had like multiple groups. We had like a giant company group, then we had subgroups, and then we had individual users. Um, and like I said, it was just it's really straightforward. Just bunch of if else. Yeah. Uh, here, I have two questions. Uh, one is, uh, you said the Redis can go down and you have to try and catch it. A lot of times when it goes down, it could actually not st accept the connection but stop responding. So does Lua support some kind of timeout? Yes. You yes, there is a, you, when you do the connection with Redis, you can specify a timeout. Okay, cool. And the second one is, uh, you said uh, you need to put some kind of tokens and then uh, keep taking on out and all. That looks too complicated setup. Sure, yeah. I'll catch you offline. All right. Uh, I uh, thanks, uh, Aditya.